Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Fairfield. Welcome to all here in the sanctuary and those watching from home. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us begin our worship of God with our call to worship. Almighty God, you look down from heaven and see every human being. From where you sit enthroned, you look out on all the inhabitants of the earth. You fashion the hearts of all. Let us praise you for your power. Let us praise you for your kindness. Let us praise you for your love. We come together now and exalt your name. Please stand if you are able. Hymn 464 can be found in the blue hymnal. Please be seated. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God. Please join in saying the prayer of confession. Great holy God, we come to you to confess our hearts. We confess, Lord, that we do not love our neighbors as ourselves. We do not forgive those who have wronged us, or we take so long before we even try. We do not look out for our own offenses against others. We do not love and obey you with our whole minds, hearts, and souls. Have mercy on us, O God, through Jesus Christ, who bore our sins 
and are falling short in his body on the cross. Let us take a moment to silently confess our sins. When we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thanks be to God, by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Please stand for the Gloria Patri. welcome you on this Mother's Day and this day of celebration for all women who God has used to impact our lives. And so today is a day of celebration, a day of remembrance, and even a day in which um, there's a bit of nostalgia and perhaps sadness. So we welcome you here online and here in person. We have a few announcements for you. Uh, first, on this Mother's Day, ladies, we are doing you a favor. Next Saturday morning at 8 a.m., we have our men's breakfast, and so we're getting your men out of the house. Amen? <laughs> and so, men, if you want to uh, notify Ken Piddington, if you will be attending our men's breakfast next Saturday at 8 a.m., uh, so please RSVP with him so that we have enough protein and carbs for all men to enjoy, and we will be studying the book of Revelation. I made a, a comment at our first service this morning. I grew up in a household in which my father was obsessed with lawn work. I didn't understand it. And today I confess in front of my church family, I have become my father. <laughs> May 21st, not Next Saturday, but the following Saturday, is our outdoor cleanup day. So we invite men, women, and children to join together. Bring your trimmers and your pruners and your weed removers as we beautify this lovely campus that God has given to First Presby. And lastly, we are excited to announce the coming of Upward Sports this fall. Upward Sports is sports with a purpose. Upward Sports allows us to not only bless our own children with the presentation of the gospel in a fun way through sports, but it will allow us to reach beyond our walls to the children in our neighborhood, to participate in sports while also discovering who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for us. And so if sports is your thing, or if it is not your thing, but you are interested in exploring, helping us put together this program, I'm going to move from Pastor Greg to Coach Greg this fall. People of all ages, you are welcome to join us as volunteers so that we can bless not only our own children, but the kids in our community. Let us continue our worship of God, but before we do, we would like to dismiss children through fifth grade to our adventures 
Sunday school program. Let us now continue our worship of God through song. How about now? There we go. Okay. Good morning. I would like to just wish a very special happy Mother's Day to all your the moms out there, all you moms watching at home. And also, I want to wish that to all the ladies that have played a really special role in our lives. Our first reading today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verses 18, and then 21 through 22. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, Verses 25 through 30. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. 
When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to this disciple, Here is your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished, and to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head, and he gave up his spirit. This is the word of the Lord. So today, May 8th, is a very special day because we get to publicly celebrate all the things that mothers and women do. All those things that go unnoticed throughout the year, underappreciated and unseen, because really we are the superheroes of this world. And men, we know that you guys do a lot too, but um, today we're not going to talk about this because this is all about women. You'll have your day next month. So don't take it personally, but it's all about women. And I want to talk about, I'm going to focus on just moms a little bit later, but I want to talk about all those women who have made an impact in our lives. And when I think about growing up, especially when I was very young, most of the women that played a role in my life they weren't mothers and they weren't even married and the same holds true with that even in my own children when they were younger and so even though we don't talk about all the things that women do we want to celebrate and recognize that because we were created for a very special purpose and we're going to talk a little bit about that too now even as we read through the bible we fall into that same thing we look for the big names We talk about Sarah and Rachel and Rebecca and Mary, and they all did wonderful and amazing things, but yet there were so many other women that are barely mentioned in the Bible that God used in such a mighty way that affected their world. Women like Shifra and Pua, Zipporah and Phoebe, women who had this unshakable faith that stood up for righteousness, that stood up for the Lord's ways, And they stood up and protected their people, their husbands, and even made a way for us future believers. Their heroic acts, they often get skimmed over, barely mentioned, often forgotten. But those same qualities that those women possess are in us too, ladies. And so today we're going to take a look at their stories, and we're going to be reminded of exactly who we are, and who we were created to be. So Shifra and Pua, have you ever heard of them? Well, they're mentioned one time in the book of Exodus in chapter 1. And at this time, the Israelites' number had grown so great that Pharaoh was getting really worried and afraid that they were going to rise up and overtake him. So Pharaoh issued a command saying to the uh, Hebrew midwives, that all male babies were to be killed at birth. Now, Shifra and Puah were two of those Hebrew midwives, but yet they refused to bow down to Pharaoh. They refused to complete his order. They put everything on the line, their own lives, their families, but they were acted out of love. Love because they knew that these babies were God's precious creation. And the cost for disobeying Pharaoh, did not compete to God's creation. And so we could actually say that by their bold and courageous acts that they held off the death of that entire race because they stood up for justice and they stood up for God's creation. Jesus talks about in Matthew 23, he talks about how he wants to gather his people, how he wants to gather his children like a mother hen gathers his ch- their chicks under their wings. And this is what Shifra and Pua did. They gathered these babies under their wings and they protected them and loved them. And I think that fear of 
going against God's creation and that deep love of God's creation is exactly what pushed them to be able to walk in the ways of the Lord, to serve God, even when the cost was so high. And they looked back. They remembered. They remembered the stories of their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and they remembered all the things that God had done for them. And in remembering all those things, that gave them the strength and the courage to continue to stand up for the ways of the Lord. It propelled them into being able to trust God in their future. And for ladies, when we went on the women's retreat last month, we studied a lot about the importance of looking back. What a vital gift that is that God gives us. Because as we look back and remember all the things God has done for us and brought us through, it gives us that strength and that courage in the moment to keep persevering. It gives us that strength and courage to keep going into the future and to continue to trust God because he is faithful and he will show up. Now, generally, we women, we're very good at remembering things from a long time ago. And I bet that if I asked the men, oh, see, some of the men are already laughing, but I bet you if I asked the men, they would say that especially in a disagreement, we have this superpower ability to remember things from many, many, many years ago. It's one of our superpowers. But we want to focus that and the things that we remember. We want to be like Shifra and Pua, and we want to remember all the things that God has done for us so that that can be our strength and our boldness to keep going forward, especially when it costs us something great. Let's talk about another woman, Zipporah. She was Moses' wife, and you briefly hear about her in Exodus chapter 2 and chapter 4. And I happen to think she's a rock star. I just love Zipporah. Because, men, this is the kind of wife you want having your back. So God tells Moses, you are the chosen one. You're going to be the vessel that I use to bring my people out of slavery. And when Moses finally comes to terms with that and agrees, he packs up his family, he packs up his, his belongings, and they set out to go to Egypt. But Moses forgot to do one very important thing. He forgot to circumcise his son. And that angered the Lord greatly because circumcision was the outward sign of the covenant and commitment between God and his people. So in the middle of the night, the Lord confronted Moses and he was so angry, he was about to kill Moses. But who saved Moses? Zipporah, his wife. She jumped into lightning speed, grabbed their son, circumcised their son, and brought it before the Lord, and the Lord spared Moses' life. The Lord saw what Zipporah did, and he honored her actions and spared Moses' life. Imagine what the Exodus story would have looked like if Zipporah didn't intervene. And maybe men, you can think about some of the women in your life. Imagine if they didn't intervene in some of your situations. The prayers and the intercession we do on behalf of our husbands and our loved ones, all those things behind the scene that no one ever knows. Yeah, we will go to very great lengths to protect those that we love. Any woman, every woman, regardless if they're a mother or not, can become a mother bear, a mama bear in seconds. If anyone that they love is in danger, we will go to great lengths to protect those that we love. And we were designed for a special purpose. We have a special heart with unique qualities that come right from our Father. In Genesis chapter 2, when we read about the creation of Eve to be a helper for Adam, we sometimes take for granted the word helper. Today, we tend to translate that more like as an assistant, but that's not at all what God meant by that. In Hebrew, the word that we translate into helper is called an azar. And an azar is more closely re, um, translated as rescuer, protector. And here's a good one, ladies, you're going to love this even a lifesaver. And it's only used 21 times in the Old Testament, two specifically for Eve, 16 for the Lord, and 
The other times, it's as other countries who were Azars to Israel. See, our God, our Heavenly Father, He is our Azar. He is our rescuer. He is our lifesaver. He is our protector. And ladies, those very things that we were created with to be that is a direct reflection of our Father within us. That desire and that ability for us to act in those ways is because we were made in the image of God. We were made specifically to be an Azar to others to be helpers and rescuers. That's our heart. All right, one more woman for you. Have you heard of Phoebe? Phoebe is mentioned in Romans 16, and she's mentioned only in two verses. But she's credited with delivering Paul's letter to the Romans. And many theologians believe that that's the most important written work of Paul because it's the letter of salvation, the letter that lays out salvation through Jesus' sacrifice for us. And this was a really sought-off job to be um, the, the deliverer of the letter because the responsibility was not just to read the letter, but you also had to be able to explain the letter. It was your job to know the author's feelings and their intents and their thoughts. You had to be very good at being that physical representation and mouthpiece for this author. So the fact that Paul chooses chooses Phoebe, a woman, is extraordinary. It shows how much confidence he had in her ability, not just to read the letter, but to teach and then to explain the gospel to other people. One theologian says that Phoebe carried under the folds of her robe the whole future of Christian theology. That's pretty intense. One woman carried the whole theology in a time where women weren't really permitted to do that, in a time where it was dangerous to travel, but let alone travel as a woman on top of it to deliver this message to the Romans. We know, just by Paul choosing her, that he regarded her as a partner in the gospel. Not his assistant, not his helper, but a partner in the gospel. And what's really important when we read through Romans 16 is the way that Paul introduces Phoebe to the Romans. He introduces her as a deacon of the church and Sancria. And the phrase of the church, those three little words, um, commentaries say are so important because it strongly suggests that here Paul is introducing her as a leader in the church and that he is affirming her call to leadership in the church. Paul was affirming a woman as a leader in the Gentile church. He knew that she was trustworthy. He knew that she was capable, and he knew that she was going to be a powerful leader. And ladies, those qualities are in us. We are capable leaders. And despite the challenges that we face across the board in many different areas of leadership, that's what God has instilled in our hearts. God gave us a voice. He gave us a voice that carries weight. He gave us a voice that matters, and he gave us his Holy Spirit to empower us to go and preach the gospel wherever we go. God has empowered us to be ministers of the gospel. You don't need a fancy title. You don't have to have a big platform. Nobody even needs to know your name, but you are empowered women to proclaim the gospel. God has instilled in us that boldness and courage and love of Shipra and Pua. He's given us the ability to be a rescuer and a protector like Zipporah, and he's given us the authority to preach and proclaim the gospel, not just in ministry um, texts, but also in society, just like Phoebe. Phoebe was a woman in society, a leader, a business owner. Those are all things that God gives to us. And each one of them had played an important part in making a way for the gospel, even all the way back to the time of Exodus. God saw them and used them in mighty ways, and God sees every one of us, and he will use us in mighty ways. 
because we were designed and created for a purpose, and only you can fulfill that purpose. And it doesn't matter if no one ever knows our name, if no one ever sees what we do, God always sees. God will never forget you. And we must stand firm and never forget who we are in Christ. So since it's Mother's Day, I want to take a few minutes just to talk to moms. And I want to acknowledge that this day may not be a day of celebration for all of you. Maybe some of you didn't have good relationships with your mothers. Maybe your mothers have already passed on. Maybe your kids even barely acknowledge this day to you. And so Mother's Day can be a painful day. And being a mother can both overwhelm our hearts with joy and love, and it can also break our hearts into many pieces because we carry a lot. And we often feel unappreciated, overwhelmed, and not seen. We carry sorrows that no one knows, burdens that we do, no one knows, particularly for our children. But there is one who always knows and always sees and always loves. So today, when I was preparing this message, well, I didn't prepare it today, but while I was preparing this message for today, I wrestled with this because, like, what do we say? What do I say to all of you mothers and women that we haven't already heard? I thought about as myself, as a mom, as a daughter, as a wife, you know, as a sister, what do I want to hear? And there was nothing that came out because we've heard a lot of it. It just seems so cliche-ish. So I went to the Lord and I asked the Lord, what is it that you want to say to women and ladies today? And I got this quiet impression in my spirit saying, I see you. And I was like, yes, we all know that you see us. You are God and you see us in everything that we do. But some of us are really tired. Some of us are really overwhelmed and we're struggling in burden. And we need a word that only you, Jesus, can give us. One that only can come from you because we need to be refreshed. We need to have life spoken to us. We need to be encouraged. We need to be renewed. So Lord, please give me a word that only you can give me. And faithful as God is, in my spirit, I got the impression again that said I saw my mother. And this heaviness came over me. And I was filled with emotion, so I knew that this was significant. And so I began praying, what does that mean? I don't understand. Of course you saw your mom. Show me where, what you're talking about. And the Holy Spirit led me to John 19. And I was overwhelmed with that emotion when I read in just a few verses how Jesus saw his mother in her pain when he was on the cross. And how he saw the pain of those that loved him and were grieving for him. And I pray that for those of you today that are struggling, that this word will bring you some comfort and healing and peace. Because he sees our pain too. And in John 19, there's Jesus on the cross in his most agonizing moments, and he sees his mother. And he didn't turn inward to his own pain. He turned outward to the one who carried him for nine months, the one who nursed him, the one that helped him grow as a little boy into a man, the one that cared for him for so many years, who was faithful and followed him. Even when she had questions, she still loved him and cared for him. And he looked down and saw her pain. And he turns to his beloved disciple and his beloved friend and says, John, this is your mother. I'm giving her to you for you to care to. And even in his last moments on the cross, he was still fulfilling the law. He was honoring the Ten Commandments. Number five, honor thy mother and father. And under Jewish law, Jesus being the firstborn son, it was his responsibility to care for his widowed mother. And yes, he had other half-brothers, but those half-brothers didn't believe in Jesus. 
And so there was this spiritual element that even Jesus on the cross was concerned about, that she would be protected and cared for in trying to navigate what this was going to look like after her son was going to rise again. And so he gives her to John, a man that doesn't have riches. He didn't give his mother into the lap of luxury. He gave his mother to the one who would love her as his own, who would care for her and invite her into his own home as if she gave birth to him. On the cross, in his final words, in his moments, his last act was an act of love for his mother. And hanging on the cross, he not just saw his mother in her pain, but he saw those women that were grieving and hurting and trying to console his mother. He saw the pain of his beloved friend John grieving and trying to console his mother. And in that moment, Jesus, Mary's son, and Jesus, Mary's savior, saw her and provided for her hanging on the cross in the most agonizing moments of his life. We can be confident and rest assured that in those last moments of his life where he saw those people that loved him, in those horrific, agonizing moments, that if he saw them and he cared for them and provided for them, that we could rest assured and know that while he is in heaven, he never takes his eyes off of us. He sees all that we do. He knows all of those joys and celebration, all of those pains and struggles, all of those things we carry that nobody else will know except for him and you. We can be at peace and in rest knowing that our Savior sees us. And so mothers, Jesus sees you. Sisters, your Savior loves you. Brothers, your Savior loves you. And we never have to doubt that. We are the apple of his eye. Our names are written on his hands. You are never not in his thoughts, never not in the corner of his eyes. You are always seen and always loved. And if you need to feel Jesus, I want to encourage you. Take a moment. Breathe in. Exhale. And be still and speak his name. Jesus. 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 And let his presence flood over you. Feel his touch and his eyes upon you. Because he loves you. You are his beloved. You are his. And he sees you. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you so much that in all things, we don't ever have to wonder if you see us. We don't ever have to wonder if you love us. We don't ever have to wonder if you are there because you are as close to us as our very breath. So I ask, Lord, that you would fill us all up, mothers, sisters, brothers, fathers, all of us, Lord. Let your presence be known to us. Let us feel you and know that you walk with us so closely. Help us to remember those things that you have already done so we can be strengthened and empowered to continue to walk and serve you all of our days, Lord. Help our lives to be a reflection of our fathers. Help us to be a reflection of your love for your creation. Help us to be those that you entrust others with for their care and their love. Help us to be ministers of the gospel wherever we go so that we may bring you glory and we may share the gift that you have given us with every person we meet. In Jesus' name, amen.
please stand, if able, as we say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Will you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, our hearts unfold like flowers before thee. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory and Lord of love. Lord, we see new life sprouting up around us. They are reminders of the new life that is ours through Christ our Lord. You know every part of us, every minute detail in our lives. And this Mother's Day, I pray that you bring comfort to those individuals, the ones who may have had a mother and lost her, and the ones who never had someone to call mother. God, in spite of the hurt we may feel, you love us. You love every single one of us. And as we heard from Pastor Liz, just as you saw the Mother Mary in her need, you see us in our need. And you meet us with love and provision. I pray that you would remind us of the truth this Mother's Day, that you would let us know your love is ever present and ever comforting, as close as the breath of our inhale and exhale. We speak this prayer to you now in gratitude and praise for the gifts of women, the gift of mothers, my mother, those of my friends, relatives, those I'll never know, and for all mothers. Thank you for the role they play in the family. Thank you for their teachings, their wisdom, their patience and understanding. Thank you for the physical, emotional, and spiritual gifts they possess. We pray that you help mothers all across the world to be blessed by you, to know your love, and to be a blessing as carriers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray now the... prayer for those mothers in Ukraine, in other places where they're suffering, where your people suffer. We pray, Lord, that you would have mercy upon moms, upon us, and upon this world that has fallen, a world, Lord, entangled in greed and pride and violence. We pray that we would know your love the love of Christ. And now hear us as we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For those of you who are with us this morning and have brought an offering, we invite you to place your offering in the offering plates on your way out. For those participating online, you are able to give a gift by visiting us on our website or by text. Let us continue our worship of God by singing the doxology followed by hymn number 473. 
Please stand if able. I pray that the Lord will give you just a glimpse of the height and the width and the depth of his love, not just today, but every day. So now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and give you peace. And all God's beloved children said, Amen. Amen.